healthy. In the previous video, we had a general introduction of what diffraction is, especially electron diffraction in TEM. When dealing with electron diffraction, we have to think about everything in the reciprocal space. The first thing we're going to learn is how to view the letters in the reciprocal space. Let's recall what we have learned from the previous video. I hope you still remember K represents the wave vectors. So Ki is the incident beam, Kd is the diffracted beam, and they have the same magnitude because it's elastic scattering. The value for K is 1 over lambda. If the diffracted beam undergoes the Bragg's condition, then the value for Kb is equal to 1 over d. b denotes the Bragg's diffraction condition. And we also define Kb as g. In this case, you can see for both k and g, they have the same units, that's 1 over length or 1 over nanometers in general. Now let's imagine we have a unit cell in the real space. In the unit cell, the points can be viewed as atoms. However, if you view everything in the eyes of K and the G, then you are seeing the world in the reciprocal space. In reciprocal space, the points you see in the unit cells or in the lattice, they actually represent a particular set of planes. So what does this mean? Uh, let's quickly look at one example. You see two unit cells. One is made from the solid lines. This is the lattice in or the unit cell in the real space. Each point in this unit cell can be atoms. In contrast, you can see uh, the unit cell made from the dashed lines is the unit cell in reciprocal space. The points represent a set of planes. For example, looking at C star, they represent the plane defined by A and B, which is perpendicular to C star. To be more precise, the point C star represents a set of planes that are parallel to the plane defined by A and B. So how can we describe the reciprocal lattice mathematically? So let's compare what we see in the real space versus what we see in the reciprocal space. So real space here and uh, reciprocal. We start by looking at a lattice of vector. So lattice of vector. In the real space, the lattice vector can be written as n one x plus n two y plus n three z, and we call that to be R n. The n one n2 and n3, these are the magnitudes. Well, x, y, z, they are directions. In the reciprocal space, we write the corresponding lattice vector. So we call this r star, n or r n star. We write that as n1 star x star plus n2 star y star plus n3 star z star. So what are the relationships of n1 star, n2 star, n3 star to n1, n2, n3? So the magnitude of n1 star is equal to 1 over n1. Then similarly, n2 star is equal to 1 over n2 and n3 star is equal to 1 over n3. How about the directions? So the new direction x star will be perpendicular to the plane defined by y and z in the real space. So mathematically what we can write down is x star dot y is equal to zero. So the dot product of x star and y is equal to zero. That means these two directions are perpendicular. Then x star dot product z is equal to zero. 
Same principle applies to the y star and the z star. This just writes out the uh, rest of the relationship. There's one note I'd like to make is that the relationship between the lattice vector in real space and in reciprocal space we have demonstrated here is independent of the coordinate system. The coordinate system can be orthogonal, like 90 degrees away from each other, or non-orthogonal. So what you see here is the tetragonal unit cell uh, or tetragonal lattice in the real space. And we know that x, y, and z, they are 90 degrees apart. So if I write down x, y, and z, they are 90 degrees apart. And for the shorter edge, the length is a. For the longer edge, the length is b. On the right, that's the corresponding tetragonal unit cell or part of the tetragonal lattice in the reciprocal space. So if we look at the magnitude of the three edges, we have 1 over a, 1 over a, and 1 over b. Note that in the real space, a is smaller than b. In the reciprocal space, 1 over a is longer than 1 over b. Looking at the directions, so this will be x star, y star, and z star. Clearly, z star is perpendicular to the plane defined by x and y in the real space. If I just highlight them, so z star is perpendicular to the plane defined by x and y in the real space. In this case, z star in the reciprocal space and z in the real space that are parallel to each other. This is a rather special case. This is true only when the system is orthogonal. Now let's move to a more generic system where x, y, and z are not 90 degrees apart. From the previous PPT slide, you've seen that before. The three sides of the unit cell, they are not orthogonal to each other. If we look at the magnitude of O, C star, it's 1 over O, C, which is similar to what we have seen in the previous example. Now let's look at the direction of O, C star. It's perpendicular to the plane defined by O, A and O, B. Note that the direction of O, C star is not parallel to the direction of O, C. The examples we have seen so far are really unit cells in the real space and in reciprocal space. How about the letters? If we look at the unit cell defined by the solar lines here, if we draw atoms at each vertex of the unit cell and extend it, kind of like a copy and a paste, we get the letters in the real space. Similarly, if we draw um, the spots at the vertex of the reciprocal unit cell, then extend it, we get the letters in the reciprocal space. A natural question to ask is why do we care about the uh, reciprocal letters? In the next video, we'll introduce a concept called evil sphere. And you will see that when evil sphere intersects with the reciprocal lattice points, that's how we can see defection spots. See you in the next video.